Well, here you go, sci-fi movie fans. This one is filled with ray guns, laser swords, fighting, and swimming through space. Is it yet another Star Wars ripoff? That's for you to decide. But seriously, yes it is. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. And on this episode, I'm going to be talking about another space movie from the late 70s that tries to do a lot of things that we've seen before but doesn't even come close to being as good. War of the Robots is an Italian movie that was given the international title of Reactor, and neither of these titles are very good considering what happens in this movie. And I'm gonna be honest with you here, this thing is a snooze fest. At times, it's hard to follow, and there's really not that much of a payoff in the end. The movie takes place in the future, with John and Lois looking to get it on. But Lois has to see Professor Carr right away. So John is like, ugh, the professor again? Fine. We'll hook up tomorrow. And I hate to break it to you, John, but that's never gonna happen. You know why? Because these guys have plans that are going to get in the way of your plans. And I'm telling you right now, if you see someone who looks like this, you better take them seriously because anyone who has a haircut like that clearly has nothing to lose. So the Lampshade Boys take out a guard with some kind of gun and kidnap the Professor and Lois, and all because the Professor is on the verge of being able to create life, and they need him to create life on their planet, the planet of Anthor. And you know what, did you really have to kidnap them? I mean, whatever happened to asking? And I think that's what's so depressing about this movie. I mean, this obviously takes place in the future, and aliens and humans still haven't figured out a way to work together. I mean, come on now. How about a trade? That seems nice. You know, like, uh, okay, you can use our scientists, and in return, we get to use your hair salons. I mean, it's not the best trade, but it's something. I guess now the atomic reactor isn't functioning right, and no one knows how to fix it except for the professor who was just kidnapped, so they really have to get him back. So John and his crew lift off into space to track down these aliens to rescue Lois and Professor Carr. But first, John has to visit the Earth Satellite Defense System to get some information on the alien craft, and I guess it's just as easy as opening the door and kind of swimming over to the satellite, untethered. Anyways, after a while, they find some alien spaceships. But hey, we live in a civilized society here, okay? You can't just go shooting weird spaceships just because you feel like it. You need confirmation from home base and instructions on how to best approach this delicate situation. Command station to spaceship Trissy, you were right. Confirmed. Those are two alien spaceships. Attack them. All right. Well, there you go. So it's likely that Lois and the Professor aren't aboard one of these ships that they're trying to destroy. I mean, there's no way to tell for sure, but there's no time for thinking about that. This is an urgent situation. Can't be thinking about the people we're trying to save. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! Fire! How about that, eh? Yeah! <laughs> On target! <laughs> Dead on! Bullseye! Man, we killed them big time. Am I right? You know, like, we just obliterated them. There is nothing left. Hey, do you think uh, those aliens that we just killed, do you think they had families? back on their home planet, you know? Like right now, some alien kid is running up to his mom like, mommy, mommy, when's daddy coming home? And she's like, oh, don't worry, he'll be home soon. I'm sure nothing bad happened to him, but they are so wrong, <laughs> like he is never coming home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, God, man, I love this job. <sighs> I just want you all to know that I, I really, really love this job. What? Apparently, the ship got damaged in the battle somehow, so they hit the emergency brake and decide, hey, let's land on this nearby planet to see if we can fix the ship. So while a few of them try to repair the vessel, the others decide to go out and look for a water supply. So they're like, all right, let's put on our anti-radiation spacesuits. And these are the anti-radiation spacesuits? 
the ones where the head is left completely exposed? That's like going scuba diving with an oxygen tank that has a hole in it. Actually, it's worse. After walking around for a while, they're ambushed by a bunch of guys wearing robes, and the one guy is like, Hey, I'm Kuba. I'm the leader of this group, can't you tell? I mean, look how jacked I am. Alright, fine, I'll prove it. I'm gonna crush this guy's head. But at the last second, they're saved by the same kind of aliens that kidnapped the Professor and Lois. Somehow, with all the commotion, they manage to hide, and John FaceTimes the ship, like, Hey, did you guys see anything? You know, on the computer? And Herb is like, yeah, the monitors recorded the arrival of a ship similar to the ones we just destroyed. The monitors have recorded the arrival of a spaceship similar to the ones we've destroyed. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Herb. Would have been nice to know that before. Maybe you should stop worrying about your stupid cowboy boots and start doing your job. It's easy to see he's from Texas. Every time he takes over command, he has to put on the old pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> See, now this piece of footage might give some people a lot of optimism about the future. You know, the fact that eventually space travel will get to the point where you can bring multiple pairs of footwear aboard. Because the only thing better than traveling through space is traveling through space in style. How about the repairs? They've been completed. Someone found a water supply. We analyzed it and filled up. We can leave whenever you like, John. Which is just a hilarious piece of writing to me. I mean, they had five people go out there to find water with a water detector. And suddenly, Herb is like, yeah, no, uh, someone else found some water. Totally cool. Yeah. And uh, also, the ship is uh, back to normal. Fixed. Anyways, I guess the aliens and robes are slaves to the Edgar Winter aliens. And the crew just decides to start shooting them all with their ray guns, which are more just like flashing, blinking light guns, if anything. And holy crap, this is looking like a He-Man convention or something. So these aliens are just getting their asses kicked. They suck. This is an absolute massacre. It makes me wonder how they even dominated these other aliens to make them their slaves in the first place. I mean, they're just running straight into the line of fire. Anyways, they free the slaves and Kuba tells them that the Anthor aliens found out how to live forever, but their organs wear out. So they take the organs from the bodies of the slaves, and that's why they kidnap the professor, because he's on the verge of creating artificial life, so he could create these organs on demand. So Kuba agrees to take them to Anthor. Back on Earth, they're like, yeah, it's no use. No one knows how to prevent the reactor from exploding. The only person is Professor Carr. So you mean to tell me that this old guy is the only person on Earth who knows how to stop this reactor from exploding? At no point did anyone suggest, hey, maybe he should train someone else in case he, you know, dies. Anyways, the crew goes to Anthor and walks right into the lab where the professor is like, what's up, bitch? I actually like it here. They gave me this kick-ass robe. Yeah, you're gonna get arrested now. Arrest them. And oh my god, these aliens are basically good for nothing. They don't even stand a chance. The professor turns on some kind of a light that knocks out the laser guns. And why does it disable their laser guns? I have no idea. The movie doesn't really like to explain stuff like that. You know, consequential stuff. But there's no time to dwell on that because here come the laser swords. And this is where you might think the aliens would have an advantage. You know, they were probably trained to use these swords. No, they suck with these too. It's just embarrassing at this point. These guys are worse at fighting than stormtroopers. So the professor is like, stop fighting or I'll kill all your friends. I guess somehow they managed to sneak aboard the ship and kidnap them. They're taken down some kind of hallway of the elderly to see the Empress and holy crap, it's Lois. What the hell is going on here? All right, so from what I understand, in order to save their lives, Lois agreed to be the Empress of this planet after their old empress died, and now they're going to use the crew as guinea pigs for the professor's research, and the professor is in love with Lois, but Lois loves John. So Lois goes down into the space dungeon and gives them a disintegrator to take out the guards, and now they're free from having to stand up against those poles and being 
held there by the flimsiest metal known to man. So the professor is like, what the hell? She should like me, not him. I'm smarter, I'm more powerful, and I have a much cooler outfit. I mean, come on, just look at this drip. You shouldn't have kissed him! Lois then sticks the professor with something. I don't know what this is, but now he just does whatever she says. Was this part of her plan all along? And what is her plan? And now it seems one of the old people from before has a plan. I don't really know what's going on. There's lying and then lies on top of lies. There's a lot of plans. For the next few minutes, there's another ray gun battle. And again, it's almost a total waste of time. The aliens are just getting destroyed. And the whole thing is just weird. It's not very fun to watch. I don't know. I was watching the professor. You're wasting your time on that guy. Why don't you get interested in someone else? A nice fellow like me, for instance. Turns out the aliens are actually robots, which makes it even worse. I mean, these are robots? They're awful. Who made these robots? I guess this is why the movie is called War of the Robots, but it should be called the incredibly boring and goofy slaughter of the robots. So they get to the ship and once again, something isn't working and they don't know why it's not working. Something's wrong with the computer. What exactly? Well, one of the secondary circuits of the computer is damaged in its primary section. Which means? It means that part of the computer isn't working, but I don't know why it isn't. And beyond that, it's entirely inconsequential because they managed to take off anyways. John and Lois are so happy to be with each other, and Julie is, of course, upset because she is in love with John. You gotta give John credit, the guy knows how to pull. <laughs> you trying to smash into some deserted planet, are you, Julie? <laughs> This man just loves the fact that Julie is heartbroken. He is enjoying it so much. I mean, what a jerk. Okay, so Earth calls and they're like, hey, congratulations on completing your mission. And who's that new member of the crew? Some kind of android? Now let's move on to something more serious. Here, we still have the pressing problem of the atomic reactor. Every attempt to unprime it has failed. According to our experts, it can stand another three hours. After that, it will explode. All right, so this is absolutely hilarious to me. I mean, the reactor is going to explode in three hours. Wouldn't you lead with that? I just think it's funny that there's this exchange of pleasantries and this friendly chatter, you know, like, hey, congratulations on completing the mission. Huh, who's your buddy over there? You know, what's his name? And then it's like, yeah, so we have three hours to live. We need to talk to the professor. And John is like, yeah, that might be a problem because the professor is really drugged up right now. And he's like, dude, did you not hear me? We have three hours until we're completely annihilated. I don't care if you need to stick your arm up his ass and work him like a puppet. I need to talk to this guy. Apparently, I guess the drugs have worn off on the professor and he tricks some guy into electrocuting himself or something. But then we have this weird... Who shot JR slash who shot Mr. Burns moment? Ah, uh, you. I hope you'll explain how you... No. No. Wait! <laughs> okay, so now the movie has turned into kind of a whodunit. Gee, I wonder who it could be. So John walks into a room and finds Lois with the robots, and it looks like she's running the ship now. Why did you kill Carr and the doctor? I didn't kill them both. Carr killed the doctor, then I killed him, because the professor was no longer part of my plan. Oh my god, what a heart-stopping twist. The most obvious person did it. So now her plan is to get a fleet of ships through the satellite defense system, so that they can be the masters of the universe. Why would that make them the masters of the universe? But here's what Lois wasn't planning on. Turns out John has a plan of his own, a very good plan. And it goes like this. The gold men can't kill us. <laughs> Get him, you guys! <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> There's parts of this movie where it really could have used more sound effects to just make it a little bit more interesting. Like, in this scene, Kuba is shooting the robots, and they're just running right into the gun. But there's no sound effect for the gun, so it's just silence, except for the sound of bodies hitting the floor. So Julie uses a stun gun on Lois, and they're like, oh good, everything's gonna be okay. But no one restrains Lois, they just turn their backs to her and forget that she's even the problem to begin with. So she just leaves, puts on a spacesuit, and bails. And then I guess while she's floating around in space, she sees one of the alien ships and hops aboard. That was convenient. John tells them back at the base that unfortunately, Professor Carr is dead. So he can't get the password to stop the reactor from exploding. And they're like, well, the professor used to keep notes on memory slides, so would you check his pockets because it's kind of important that we not die? So they find the slide in the professor's lab and that's it, problem solved. Kind of anticlimactic. That's the one. There's the reactor code sign and the formula to stop it. Where did you get it? Well, Cooper, I found it in the professor's laboratory. Thank goodness for that. Anyways, now we have this dogfight between the crew and the Anthor ships, and this just goes on forever. It's obviously trying to replicate the Death Star battle in Star Wars, but it just never comes even close to being as interesting. Finally, near the end of the battle, Lois has Julie in her sights, and I'm telling you right now, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Get out of the way! Disappear and you'll be safe, Lois! No. You'll have to decide. You have two seconds. I've got Julie in my sights, John. Julie, what do you think? It's your decision. You make it. Honestly, what is the point of even asking Julie? Hey, Julie, uh, what do you think? Should I kill Lois or should I let her kill you? And to make it worse, Julie is like, that's yeah, your decision, John. Whatever you think's best. <laughs> what? Almost like they're trying to decide where to go to dinner that night, you know, like, you know, uh, it's it's your decision, really. You pick tonight. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't, I really don't feel like dying tonight. But uh, if if you want me to die, I'll. Yeah, I, I guess I could die. Of course, John shoots Lois. Not really suspenseful in any way. Of course, he was gonna shoot her. She's the villain. Now, this is an Italian movie, and I think there might have been some stuff that got kind of lost in translation during the dubbing. Either that or the original dialogue really was this bad. When I think of all that's happened, it makes life fantastic. There wasn't that much information I could find on this movie, but to sum it up, I wouldn't recommend it. It's an hour and 40 minutes long, but it feels even longer because I thought it was pretty boring through most of it. But that's pretty much it for this one. As usual, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Hey, do you think they'll have a memorial service for them? You know, or like a candlelight vigil? They'll set up a, a hotline so that anybody with any information can call in? Because they don't know, right? Th th those aliens just never came home, so nobody knows what happened to them. Except us, right? Because we're the murderers, that's right. Okay, so um, I, I just gotta ask, because it feels like the mood has changed, uh, what, what's happening here? Because you guys were super excited when we killed those aliens. And, and now, I mean, what's wrong? What happened? Why is it so quiet in here? Somebody die? <laughs> Not aliens though, like somebody that matters. I also like how at one point in the movie, one of the crew members gets killed, but it's never mentioned. It's almost as if no one even notices that she's gone. And then I guess while she's floating around in space, she sees one of the alien ships and hops aboard. <laughs>